Hello, everyone. This is the lecture for section 2.2, .2, determining volume by slicing. So one of the very first things that we're able to do now that we have sort of a basic understanding of what integration is, right, um, is finding volumes of really, really random, really, really um, uh, complex shapes, OK? Um, there's going to be a couple methods that we're going to cover in this section. And uh, hopefully now in this section, this is where we're going to um, get into why that sigma notation, why that summation notation, the, um, the, the reason why we change the integral symbol, um, or sorry, the reason that the integral symbol is what it means is um, the repeated adding of uh, sort of similar terms, right? Um, we're really going to see that sort of come to light here. Uh, it's actually going to be very necessary for us to sort of um, um, be able to uh, see each and every part of that summation, and then after that, be able to turn it into the integral, okay? Um, so the first, uh, as a broad sort of method that we're going to go ahead and cover um, is the slicing method, okay? And this is by far, um, at least for now, uh, the method that uh, you guys are going to need to get comfortable with, the slicing method. So as a broad sort of stroke into our study of volumes, right, um, we're going to start with this one. So let's go ahead and take a um, a random shape. Let's take this cross-sectional area A that I'm talking about here, okay? And let's say I wanted to find its volume, right? Let's say this thing extends a certain distance, like the, sh the picture below it, right? Let's say I wanted to find the volume of the dang thing, right? Okay. Um, we're going to sort of pretend that this is just a slice. So pretend you have sort of like a loaf of bread, and it's this random, ugly, ugly shape that's right here, right? Pretend that's your loaf of, you know, nasty bread, whatever, right? The way that we would usually find the, um, uh, the volume of such a shape, right, is we would take uh the uh you know our loaf of bread and just slice it up right and we find the volume of each little slice right um and then add up all of the slices all together so to sort of explain what that is right like i said this is going to be our cross-sectional area so this is going to be our area a right a slice is going to look like this. So this still has that same area, right? But now we're giving it a depth, right? You guys see that? It's going to be a depth. And we're going to call this depth delta x, right? So the idea, like I said, is we slice up our bread, right? And then add up all the mini slices, right? That's going to be our big volume, right? OK? The exact same idea happens when we want to actually find the volume of anything, OK? At least with integrals, OK? So let's go ahead and pretend that we have a, let me go to shapes here. I'm going to go ahead and do a sort of a Y and an X. Okay. And what I'm going to do is this. Let me see. I'm going to move this over a little bit so that I can grab a second one. I'm going to go here and go out this way about, and then I'm going to grab the other end and right about there and sort of drive it out this way there we go something like that right so the idea is if we grab sort of each one of these slices that's going to look like a 3d cross-sectional slice like this right here right if we grab one of those right so i'm going to grab one of these slices it's going to look like this sort of right yeah something like that, and then there's a thickness, and there's another like this, right? So we have two things here. Uh, this is still the area A, right? And we're basically choosing, I'm going to call this my y-axis, and then this that's going through here, my x-axis, right? If we choose a random point here, let's say this is my x I star, right? Then the volume of this piece is going to be A that is dependent on my Xi star times my delta, delta 
x. Okay. This is the this is the volume for just this slice that's right here. Just this slice. Just this little piece that's right here. Okay. And if we add all of these slices up, right, we get the total volume. So that's why we have this, the sum, right, uh, as i equals 1 to n, a of xi star, right, we can choose any, um, we can choose any uh, uh, xi within our partition uh, p, right, times a thickness, delta x, right? Okay. So that in itself is simple enough, right? Now, the idea that we've been going through over and over now, it's going to happen again, right? Is we want that we want that delta x. We want the thickness of each one of our bread slices to become smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay? And the way that we do that is we take the upper limit of our summation that n and we throw that to infinity. We throw that to infinity, right? Okay. And by doing that, right, we make infinitely, infinitely smaller slices of our volume. Okay. And by doing that, we end up doing this. We get our integral from a point A to B. Let me try in my A and B. I'm going to put A to B, right, of A sub X times DX, right? Some area times a little width, a, a delta X in this case, since we took the limit as it approaches infinity, it's now going to be DX, okay? So this is sort of like the explanation for how to find the volume of a shape for something that's sort of semi-uniform. Notice that the shape of this, uh, and notice that the shape of this Wonko, you know, figure that I have here, right, doesn't change as I move across uh, the x-axis, right? As I move across from A to B, it still keeps the same shape, right? So all of our slices are going to be about the same, right? Well, they are going to be about the same. They are going to be the same, right? So uh, that's the thing that's going to be uh, varying. So that face. Uh, that face is going to be the thing that's going to be changing, right? So how do we take into account that change, right? The easiest way that we do that is by this thing called the DISC method, okay? Um, the DISC method is one of the very first methods that you're going to, uh, this is going to be the first method that you'll use. Uh, the slicing method that we did ab above is sort of like the same theory, except now we're going to actually put some uh, geometrical shapes into it, okay? The disk method uh, deals with, like it says right there, it's a disk, okay? Um, where the area, basically the same area that I have up, up, up above, is going to be that area. It's going to be the area of a circle. That is the pi r squared, okay? So that pi r squared is given giving us the area of that circle right there, right? And we have an H, that's the height, right? That is the area of a disk, essentially, right? Or sorry, that is the volume of a disk. So the area of the, the front face, right, times the height, okay? That ends up being uh, the way that we develop the very first equation for solving for a volume. Um, Rotation about an x-axis given a uh, non-negative continuous function. Uh, in order to find the volume of a shape, okay, uh, that goes from A to B and it revolves around the x-axis, okay, then it is going to be this equation right here, okay. So now, we kind of want to had want to wanted to have these two open at the same time. The idea here, right, is we need to find the area of this circle right here, right? And this is usually dictated by a radius. It's usually dictated by R, right? What we're going to do now, if you guys sort of picked it out from the equation, is that we are now going to let this radius be dictated by our function f of x. 
Okay. <clears throat> and that is sort of like the theory behind the disk method for finding volumes of a solid. Okay. Let me go ahead and move down to the example so I can show you guys what this looks like. Okay. Uh, let me blow out a little bit more. There we go. There we go. Okay. Find the volume of the solid of revolution generated by that. And I forgot something. So about the x-axis. So I'm going to grab this thing. I'm going to grab this shape. Okay. I've already given you the shape here. So that function is this one that's given right here between 0, 1. Uh, sorry, negative 1, comma 0. It's that strip right there. So, sorry, that baby in the background. Um, I need to revolve this around the x-axis. So this means I'm going to do this. I'm going to spin it that way. OK? Now, uh, I got to mention this to everybody. Um, there is somehow, some way, uh, you got to get comfortable with being able to at least uh, picture the shape in your mind and suitably, uh, uh, sort of uh, satisfactorily, try to draw it. Okay? So try to draw this shape. Try to draw the shape. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and try to do that right now so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to put my... Whoa, not that color. Uh, there we go. So I'm going to have my X, or that's going to be my Y axis. I'm going to have my X axis go straight across down the middle. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and draw. Here's my 0, 0. Here's my 0. 0.5, negative 0. 0.5. Here's my negative 1. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and draw this shape as best as I can. It's not going to be exact, but it's going to be close enough, something like that, right? Okay, now, like I said, I want to draw this shape out as best I can. Um, I'm going to go like this. There we go. That looks much better. Okay, I want to revolve it around the x axis. So this shape has to go this way, like this, sort of like that. Okay. So I'm going to go and, you know, be conscious. This is just me sort of free freehand in it. Um, it doesn't have to be exact. Um, I'm not going to 0.5. I'm not going to sort of knock points off. I do want to see an attempt, though. OK, I do want to see an attempt at graphing this or showing me what kind of shape you're playing around with. There we go. That's as close as I think I'm going to get it. OK, and well, let me sort of provide some 3D-ness to it. So it's going to be looking like this. You guys really want to be sort of exact by it. OK, it's just going to be sort of like a, a rounded out Hershey's kiss. Let's put it that way. OK, that's what it's going to look like. So we need to find the volume of this. OK, I'm going to put them. Uh, negative 0.5 back. I'm going to put the zero back. So now, how do we find the shape? How to find the volume of this shape? Okay. So there's a reason why I want you guys to try at least at your very best to at least try to draw this out. It's because uh, using the drawing, you can help yourself sort of gather your thoughts to how to do this integral. Okay. And the way that we're going to do it is, like I said, we're going to do a disk method. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a disk out. So I'm going to go ahead and choose out this disk right here. I'm going to do There we are. There's my disk. Whoa. Needed to round it out a little more. Let me get the negative 0.5 out of the way really quick. Oh, come on. Notice I'm not editing editing any of this out because I kind of want to I want to show you guys like the time that it takes to do this. So here is one of the disks, right? So let's go ahead and start um, sort of compiling everything. We know that this is going to be our dx. This is going to be our thickness, right? 
And our radius for this disk, whoa, got rid of a bit too much there. The radius of this disk from here to about there, right? That radius is f of x, if you guys take a look, because this was all based off of this red line right here, right? So we have everything that we want here, right? Um, at this point, we just follow the equation that was above it for um, finding the, the volume. So this is going to be the integral, OK? Let me draw it a little smaller. From negative 1 to 0, OK? The equation states that it's just going to be, let's go roll up a little bit. So there's my a to b, right? Pi times f of x, which we know what it is, right? 5x, x minus 1, x plus 1, quantity squared times my dx. That is my, uh, that is my integral. That's it. Okay. So now let's go ahead and compute this out like we usually would, right? So in order to compute this out, give me a second. Let me grab my notes and bring them over. Okay. So to compute this out, right, I'm going to go ahead and start reducing some stuff. It's going to be the integral from negative 1 to 0, pi times 5x, uh, x minus 1 times x plus 1. That's going to be x squared minus 1, all of that squared, dx. OK, equal to, uh, if we multiply all of this stuff out, integral negative 1 to 0, uh, pi 5x cubed minus 5x squared dx, OK, and now, Notice that everything inside the, um, after the pi has a five in it, right? So I'm gonna factor out the five. And in order to factor it completely out, it's being squared, so I get to factor out five squared. So what all of this reduces to now is this right here, 25 pi times the integral, negative one to zero. Uh, x cubed minus x squared, whoops, x cubed minus x quantity squared dx, okay? And if you expand this out, you get the integral, negative one to zero, x to the sixth minus two x to the fourth. Uh, plus x squared quantity dx. And that is something we can integrate now. OK, so then all of this, let me go ahead and scroll down a little more, is equal to 25 pi times. Now let's go ahead and integrate this. x to the seventh over 7 minus 2 times x to the fifth over 5 plus x cubed over 3, evaluated from negative 1 to 0. OK, uh, when we put 0 in, well, let's go ahead and do it. Uh, 25 pi, so I'm going to do the first one. I'm going to box this first. Uh, 0 minus 2 times 0 plus, whoops, not 3, uh, another 0, right? minus negative 1 seventh minus 2 times negative 1 over 5 plus 1 third. And if you reduce all of this, you get 25 pi times 8 over 105. So if you go ahead and do all of the math, all of the arithmetic of the stuff above, you should reduce everything down to this. And this is equal to 
8398. So we have an answer. Okay. Let me go ahead and move back to our uh, calculator, our definite integral calculator. So we have an answer and we knew the integral that we needed to solve to begin with, right? We needed to solve this integral up here. And that is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and provide the uh, the calculator with that function itself, right? And hopefully what we get is our answer. So it's going to be pi times 5x, x minus 1, x plus 1 quantity squared. Well, now, if you guys take a look, the picture is definitely not the right picture, right? But this number hopefully is the right number. This answer that we get at the bottom is definitely the right answer. So we need it from negative one to zero. So right now it's going from negative one to two. I'm going to grab my B value and, whoa, and drag it back to zero. There we are. Okay. Excuse me. So we do get an answer, and it is the correct answer for that integral, and we set it up correctly. So this is the volume right here. We've got our volume. We are done. That is our volume. Okay. Uh, let me go back to this. So notice how much work was behind it, and in particular, notice how useful it was to draw it. Okay, make sure you provide some sort of drawing. It'll help you at least collect some thoughts, uh, sort of get um, your thinking straight when you start doing these integrals. These are very complicated and we're gonna get to much more complicated ones in the future, okay? All right, that's it for this example. What's up now is um, quick checks. So just do the one, that's, uh, do the one that is uh, uh, assigned to your group and um, and double check your work before I uh, go into your groups so I can pick out an answer and put it in our notes, okay? Uh, just like we had um, uh, the, the example that I provided before, right, uh, was done in sort of like the X direction, right? We all, we were integrating based on the X, right? We can also integrate based on dy. So we can find volumes of things uh, that are sort of defined by our y variable instead of our x variable, OK? <clears throat> Excuse me. And the theory does not change. The picture does, for sure. But the theory does not change. So here's my y axis, right? And here's my x axis, right? Uh, you go ahead and this is my x and this is my y, right? And we can have a, you know, a funky function over here. Let's say this is f of x, right? And we can revolve this about the y-axis in this case, right? This is y-axis in this case. Whoops. Typo, typo. Okay. Around the y-axis this time, right? So our shape is going to look sort of like the same over here. I'm going to try. Right, and mm, let me move it over a little bit more. I tried. Um, the disc is going to be sort of. Oh boy, you see how hard this is. I like telling people, you know, Calc two is where you learn how to draw. There we go. I tried. Uh, boom. Hopefully you guys are seeing what I'm trying to do. We've got a crazy setup. And that sort of keeps me from looking at this right. There we go. Much better. So we have a function, right? Let's say that this is my g of y, right? That's my g of y. And I want to revolve it around the y-axis. So I'm going like this this time. I'm going that way this time, right? As opposed to before, where I was going this way, 
right? In this direction. So this time I'm not doing that one, I'm going across the y-axis. So that's why I got this one, right? Okay, and if you do that, the equation does not change, right? The only thing that really changes is sort of the, the way, the direction that you're gonna be doing your integral. It's gonna be dy this time, okay? And if you were paying attention from before, right? Um, from the previous sections, uh, I was mentioning repeatedly, make it a habit to specifically start writing this down. Start writing dy down, okay? Or start writing dx, okay? Uh, you are getting into the point of calculus where uh, the direction of integration, right? The direction of your computations, uh, the independent variable of, of which you will be working with uh, can now change between x and y. This is the very, I think this is maybe the second, first, second time that you guys are gonna see it um, in calculus ever, right? And there's multiple uh, multiple other instances where we're gonna have to be able to uh, interchange between X and Y, okay? So get into the habit, if you haven't done so yet, get into the habit of writing the DY, writing DX, okay? Okay. <clears throat> The next method I want to talk about, the washer method. Um, if any of you are mechanically savvy, if you've worked on anything um, that's got, you know, metal bits, uh, chances are you know what a washer is. And that's the idea behind the washer method. A washer is basically sort of like, think about it as a little disc, right? And it's got a little hole in it. That's it. Okay. Um if any, if any of you have worked on a, a vehicle, a car, a, a motor of some sort, you know what a washer is, okay? Um, that's the next shape that we're gonna be talking about, okay? And the washer method uh, tends to take care of shapes that have sort of a hole in it. Um, and uh, so that hole basically is defined by another function, another function G of X, okay? Uh, the same thing happens here, okay? Uh, suppose that you have two functions, an f of x and a g of x, right, that are non-negative, but f is always going to be bigger than g over a, b, okay? And let r denote the region uh, bounded above by the graph f, below by the graph g, on the left by a, and on the right by b, okay? Then the volume of the solid is given by this equation right here. Okay, both of these are exactly the same sort of equation. Uh, the only difference really is, and I'll, I'll explain this in a second, is the f of x just becomes a big R and the g of x becomes a little r. That's it. I'll explain that in a second, okay? Uh, again, since we can do this over the x-axis, we can also do it over the y-axis. So let u, y, and v, y be continuous functions, right, such that ui is always bigger than dy, okay? Let r denote the region that's bounded above and below by u and v, and then on the, uh, sorry, uh, on the right and on the left by u and v, uh, below by c and above by d, okay? And the volume is still the same. Notice that the equation really doesn't change. The only direction, the only thing that changes is the direction of our integration. We're doing it uh, across the y-axis instead of across the x-axis. That is it, okay? And the other equation that's below it, right? You guys see that's a big R minus little r, right? So now let me explain that. Now that we sort of, sort of understand that the equation depending on, um, depending on the uh, direction of our integration, doesn't change, right? Why the big R and the little r? Well, what people tend to remember is this. There's a big radius and a small radius. That is it, okay? So let me show you guys uh, what I'm talking about. I'm gonna go ahead and draw both down here. Uh, this one I'm gonna do with respect to the x, and this one I'm gonna do with respect to the y. So this one's going to be my very first equation that I put up here, this one. Let me highlight it. It's going to be this one right here. Okay. And then the second one is going to be this one. 
that one's going to be the, with the respect to y. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and start my drawing again. I'm going to put an x-axis down and a y-axis down, not a green one. Uh, let me go ahead and change the color. There we go. I'm going to slap an x-axis down. I'm going to I'm going to move this over a little bit so I can give myself a little more room. There we go. Shape. There we go. Okay. And just like in my definition, right, I need a f of x, right, and a g of x. And actually, let me make my g of x a little straighter just for simplicity's sake. Uh, this is my f of x, and this is my g of x. Right, and I need my volume from A to B. So here's my A, here's my B, right? So my F function does this down below. Try it again. There we go, okay. And then my G function, let's do like that about, that's got to be a little thicker. There we go. That looks about right. Okay. So I want my integral between A and B, right, of these two functions. Now, notice that if I want to find the shape, right, of this shape, this is what I want to find the, and let me move my A in a little bit so I can choose some stuff out in particular. So here's my a to B. So this is the region. This is the region that's going to get sort of uh, rotated about the x-axis. I'm going to rotate it about the uh, the x-axis there. So it's going to go like this. Okay. So then that means the same little strip is down here, correct? Cool. So we have this thing going on. I'm gonna do a double thing here, okay? <clears throat> so this region right here, this region R, is what's gonna be uh, rotated about the x-axis, right? And if you notice, when we do that, there's gonna be a hole in the middle, okay? So now I'm gonna draw in blue pen, I'm gonna use blue pen, I get rid of the A really quick. I'm going to move the A down here to A. There we go. I'm going to grab my blue pen. I'm going to draw the shape as best I can. So you guys see that there's a opening right there. Right? There's going to be another. It's not an opening, but hopefully you guys see the opening already. Oh, not what I wanted. There we go. Not what I wanted telling you, people learn how to draw really good in Calc 2. Well, there you have it. You guys hopefully see, actually thicken the line a little bit. Hopefully you guys see, whoa. And you guys see the shape that's taking, the shape that's taking shape. Okay, this shape runs across with that, and then down here, there we go. I'm going to draw a dotted line through the back, because this is the back end, right? Okay, and then I'm going to draw this, whoa, draw this a little... Closer right there, closer right there. There you have it. There is your shape, okay? So notice that there is a hole through the middle, okay? Notice that there is a hole through the middle. That hole we don't want, right? Now, let's go ahead and start talking washers now, okay? If you notice, right, we have two radii, right? One radii is this one, 
right? And that one is governed by G of X, right? And now we have another radii that goes, I'm going to start it from the same spot, but that one goes all the way out to the outer edge, right? And that radii is governed by F of X. Okay. So what we do instead, like what we do in this in this uh, in this format here, uh, is basically, you know, the big radius minus the little radius. We take the little radius away. That's why these are set up this way. So if we take a look at these, right? Notice how it's big radius minus little radius, right? And then over here, big radius minus little radius. The only difference is depending on what direction uh, we are taking our integral with. That's it. That is it. Okay. And the logic is basically the same for the y with respect to the y. So I'm going to do the same exact picture, right? So uh, not that color. Okay, and then let me get another one straight up and down. There we go. So then same idea, right? I'm gonna have an f of x. Whoa, I'm not too like the shape. And then I'm gonna have a, a g of x, right? So, and I want from, let me use the letters that are there, from a C value to a D value, right? So my function is going to do something similar over here. So something like that, right? Okay. So this is the, this is the region that I want to revolve around the x-axis, this region right here. A little, little more difficult to sort of shade in, but hopefully you guys got the right idea. It's that sort of, sort of little region that's right there, right? Same thing, right? There's going to be a big uh, radius and a small radius, like so. There we are, okay? And then this sort of wings out this way. This sort of wings out that way, right? And then these two should join up like this. There we go, right? And then I'm gonna do the back end. And then this two right here, you know, little radius on the bottom end, there we go. Well, you guys see what I'm trying to do here. Okay, so that is the shape. Okay, so now how is this, how does this work in practice? So let me go ahead and do an example here. Okay, uh, suppose I had two graphs here, right? So my f of x is the square root, one over the square root of x plus one. That is that red line down below, right? Okay. And uh, the equation g of x equal 1 is that strip right there, right? So now I need the volume of this strip right here. I'm going to go ahead and coordinate off a little bit. It's going to be this right here because it's from 1 to 2, right? All of this. This is my shape. I want this to revolve over the x-axis. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to that way, that way, okay? So I am going to go ahead and go to my shapes. Uh, I wanted it in black ink. There we go. Um, there we are. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going to go ahead and try to replicate this as best as I can. Like I said, 
you guys should try to do the same um, on your own. It'll vastly help when you actually need to graph this thing. Like, it'll it'll help you sort of organize your thoughts, help you like make sure that your calculations are correct. Okay, so here's my one. So that goes straight across like that, right? And then I have the, the f of x, right? Which is sort of like, like this. Starts off maybe right here and sort of has a slope downward like that, right? So same thing, I'm gonna go down here. Here's the bottom one. And then I'm gonna do this right here. It's gonna go like that, okay? Here's my, the, the, uh oh. There we go. I only wanted to get rid of that line. There we go. Okay. This is the shape I want. This right here. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and try to draw it. So like I said, uh, for all of you, try to draw the shape as best you can. Uh, I do expect you to at least attempt it. I don't expect perfection here, just like I'm not the best artist that you guys have all seen. But I do expect you all to try this out, okay? Um, it'll, um, like I said, it'll at least help you visualize what you're, what you're trying to compute there, okay? And why did it do that? For some reason, it typed stuff in there. All right, we'll live with it. Um, let me try. Let me draw this thing back. Whoa. There we go. All right. I don't know why that EB is there. Uh, for some reason, let me see if you draw. There we go. Delete. Thank you. Okay, so we have our shape. We have our shape. Okay. So now we have to actually figure out how to compute this thing, right? The formula is already given, and it's exactly how you think it would be. Uh, in this case, we're doing it uh, with respect to x, so we're going to be using this one. All we got to do now is assign our big radius and our small radius. We already have that sort of taken care of, right? So we're off to the races. This is going to be the integral, right? From one to two, of pi times the big radius. That's going to be my one squared, right? Minus my small radius squared. My small radius is given by the other function, the, the red one, which in this case is going to be the one over square root of x plus one. Quantity squared dx. Which I'm going to put this in big brackets, separate it to, to denote it to be our integral, right? Okay. Now, um, one to two, we can go ahead and do some rewrites. We can split this up, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So pi times one squared dx right, minus the integral one to two of pi times x plus one to the one half, negative one half squared. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. And if this reduces, right, uh, this reduces down to the integral uh, one to two, uh, pi dx, because one squared is one, minus the integral one to two of pi times x plus one to the negative one power dx, okay? Now we can actually integrate this using the, um, the rules that we did in the previous sections. The integral of the very first thing, this is the one, 
the integral of the very first thing is going to be pi times x uh, from 1 to 2, right, minus pi times the ln of x plus 1 evaluated at 1 to 2. So that second integral, this one right here, some of you guys might be thinking, how did he do that so fast? It is a U substitution. Okay. I invite you all to double check it yourselves. And that will produce this right here. Okay. Okay. So now when uh, you actually compute these out, right, this is going to be, I'm going to do the very first one. I'm going to get rid of these the highlights. So that's going to be uh, pi times 2 minus pi times one, right? That's the first part, okay? Minus, here we go, uh, pi times the ln of three minus uh, pi times the ln of two, okay? This all reduces down to pi minus pi ln of three over two. If you use your precalculus rules, um, that's what all of this reduces down to, okay? And this is equal to pi times one minus the ln of three over two. That's just basic factorization. And the final answer here is gonna be one point eight uh six seven seven eight okay that's it now uh let's go ahead and use our calculator since we still have it present for us right so here's our calculator okay it won't give us the shape but it will give us uh, our integral. It will give us our numerical answer for an integral, whatever we plug in, right? And that's exactly what we're going to use this thing for. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that function for us, okay? And I'm going to put in this integral because this is what we were solving for from the very beginning. We were solving for this. This is what we were solving for. So I'm going to plug that in for my integral. In particular, I'm going to plug in the stuff that's inside the brackets. I'm going to plug in just this bit. And then we'll move the uh, the limits of integration until we get to one and two. That's it. So this is going to be pi times. Make sure you plug it in right. One minus the square up uh, one divided by square root of x plus one. I'm going to close that off to the squared power and then close. Whoops. Squared and then close it off. There we go. So let me actually open this up a little bit so you guys can see that I'm typing in the right thing. It's exactly what I'm typing in. That's my integrand. Okay. And I need it from one to two. So that's exactly what I'm going to go ahead and find. I'm going to zoom in really quick. Uh, I'm going to move this to one. And then my B is going to be 2. There we go. 1.86778 uh, seven, seven, and change. There we go. OK. Since our work was sort of uh, done appropriately, since we sort of uh, derived our, uh, our equation right, that is going to be the answer for this problem. Yeah? OK. Uh, what comes up next is your quick checks. Make sure you, like I said, try these out. Um, this is going to be the very best time to sort of get into the, um, uh, it's going to be the very best time for you to get into the habit of writing down every single step that you need, okay, and putting down every single bit of notation that you're going to require, okay. Make sure that uh, you don't skimp out on the directions, don't skimp out on steps. Okay, 
uh, don't skimp out on the picture. Do your very best to draw the picture as much as you can, as best you can. Okay, it'll help you, like I said, organize your thoughts. Uh, you know, to not stray away from and, and not confuse yourself while you're doing it. Okay. Uh, after this quick check, it is your lecture question. Okay. Uh, if you've got any problems with these, um, I have my office hours. You can come to the college, uh, or I can. Uh, I'm going to be popping in uh, online. Uh, to sort of help you guys out if you need it. And in particular for this class, I have a Friday hours um, all day. So if you need some uh, you know, additional help, uh, come find me on online uh, on Fridays. Okay. Besides that, uh, I'm all done here. Happy studying.